I'm but, done. But, I'm done. This is the most unfair election ad I have ever been a part of. You guys are working. That's fine. I'm done. Conservative Hugh Hewitt has quit the Washington Post after a uh, testy exchange on a live video show that they had that I didn't know existed. But uh, he apparently, I'm going to show you the video. After storming out of this, he quit the <laughs> Washington Post completely, which has been, has been going through its own issues after not willing or not being willing to come out and um, give an endorsement for Kamala Harris because of the pressure from Jeff Bezos. But putting all that aside, this is, uh, I got to say, this is just fun. <laughs> this is a fun thing to watch. It's hilarious to see Hugh Hewitt get so incensed. And then what's funny as well is that uh, I'll get to some of the what he's angry about here and, uh, you know, the story behind that. But let's first watch this clip. Is it me or does it seem like this week Donald Trump is laying the groundwork for contesting the election by complaining that cheating was taking place in Pennsylvania by suing Bucks County for alleged irregularities? And this is on top of his continual asser assertion that if he loses, it's because of cheating. Uh, yeah, that's what he's been laying the groundwork for this, just not in the last week, but in the last umpty ump months. No election can be fair unless Donald, in Donald Trump's mind, unless Donald Trump wins it. Uh, and I think we are going to see him both rev up his supporters to contest elections outside of courtrooms and go to every courtroom he can in America where it's relevant to make whatever um, arguments he can, no matter how far-fetched. We saw John, uh, that I, I got out it. last time, but it didn't work out this time. It may not work. It may not, that may not happen this time. And now I'll let you go, Hugh. Well, I've just got to say, we're news people, even though we're at the opinion section. It's got to be reported. Bucks County was reversed by the court and instructed to open up extra days because they violated the law and told people to go home. So that lawsuit was brought by the Republican National Committee and it was successful. The Supreme Court ruled that Glenn Youngkin was successful. We are news people, even though we have opinions and we have to report the whole story if we bring up part of the story. So yes, he's upset about Bucks County, but he was right and he won in court. That's the story. I'll let you keep going, Jonathan. Um, no, I'm just, I don't appreciate being lectured about reporting when you, many times you come here saying lots of things that aren't I won't come back, fact. Jonathan. I'm but, done. But, I'm done. This is the most unfair election ad I have ever been a part of. You guys are working. That's fine. I'm done. So, Ruth, you wrote a column this week uh, ending with this line, and actually, I think this is perfect. Um, we're going to put it on the screen. You wrote, you want to know the stakes of this election, not only democracy, but decency. Talk more about that, Ruth. Okay, I'm collecting myself. Oh, Ruth froze. And then she freezes. And <laughs> the next minute... Or the next few couple of minutes is uh, Jonathan Capehart trying to wrestle with the the connection here, and it's just very awkward. So uh, Hugh Hewitt did in fact end up quitting the show. So just a veteran Washington Post columnist quits after walking out of live event. Uh, he so this was I guess he spoke with um, uh, Fox News Digital saying, I have in fact quit the post, but I was only writing a column for them every six weeks or so. Uh, he would claims he told opinion editor David Shipley of his decision to leave the company on Friday morning. So he was one of the few, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it's true, but he was a, he was a vocal pro-Trump voice within the editorial board. I don't think he was one of the few, but he is a, a pro-Trump voice. And he, he's one of these guys that tries to sanitize the right wing and tries to sanitize Trump. I mean, if you're still <laughs> if you're still supporting Trump and trying to do it from an intellectual perspective, that is clearly what your job has to be. Uh, but what's funny about this, what I find so funny about this is that there is actually some merit to what Hugh Hewitt was saying. So while Trump, uh, okay, let me be clear here. The lawsuit was successful. 
And it was because there were polling locations that were being closed uh, for mail-in ballots before uh, 5 p.m. So I don't think I highlighted anything here, but if you get, so they were uh, said voters who were told by the county officials as, as early as 2.40 p.m. on Tuesday that they would not be able to apply for the ballot. So basically they should have been open until 5 p.m. and they weren't. Now, even though this was, an, uh, I think, a solid reason to to sue to ensure that people who wanted to vote are able to vote i do think the intention here is not honest i think the intention here is to lay the groundwork for future lawsuits to say hey look we sued before and we were successful because this was an obvious one an obvious get that you know honestly even the democratic party could have sued here uh to try and and ensure that these voters were able to vote but this is a way to kind of lay the groundwork in, in for any future lawsuits that are not going to be as legally sound, but as a way to say, hey, look at our precedent. We've already sued and we, we were successful. That's This is part of the reason why we should be successful next time in trying to challenge you know, the election that in this scenario that we're discussing, uh, Trump loses. So while I don't think the intent behind it was honest, I it doesn't deny the fact <laughs> That it appears Hugh Hewitt was correct to say that uh, they sued for legitimate reason. But it is just to have, look, I, I kind of think the this whole endorsement, like the, having newspapers endorse a candidate is a little antiquated and a little ridiculous. I don't think it's even necessary. Like the, I think there there is some argument to saying that there should not be endorsements from the Washington Post or anybody. But do that, you know, two years ago. <laughs> Don't do that a couple weeks before the election. That's the wrong time to come out with that position, especially when it was clear that Jeff Bezos was the one putting the pressure on the Washington Post to not endorse anybody when you have on one side a clear fascist. So it just, so much of the reporting from whether it's the Washington Post, New York Times, for me, it, it depends completely on who is the writer of that piece. Who is behind it? What is the intention? This is why it's it's impossible to, to, to just say, oh, the Washington Post is trash or the New York Times are trash. No, there have been investigative pieces done by both of those outlets that have been fantastic and important in and uh you know are are things that we can look to and, and, and cite. That doesn't mean that everything they put out is worth reading or worth considering. Like Hugh Hewitt. There's no reason to ever listen to that man. This is a guy who, you know, was once somebody who was critical of Trump and then like the vast majority of Republicans, both in in uh, political life and in media, came out to eventually endorse and support Donald Trump. I mean, it's so funny to go back and just see what Republicans were saying about Trump in 2016 prior to him winning the primary. People like Ben Shapiro who were just, you know, ringing the alarm bells over how crazy Trump was and how we cannot make this man the candidate. And now he's just out there defending Trump every single day. And Trump's only gotten worse in his rhetoric. But it goes to expose just how uh, vapid all of what they're, they pretend to argue for is. There really are no principles. It's simply about control. And as long as they want to continue supporting massive corporations, continue controlling people's lives, that's going to be the through line that brings all of these conservatives together.